Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then give it a thumbs up, hit the bell notification, and the subscribe button. And I'm sorry if it's dark, I've just given up on the sun doing what it's supposed to do for more than five minutes, okay? It was nice, and then I was like, okay, I can finally film! And then I set everything up. Now it's, it's overcast again. And of course the dogs are snoring. So, um, September is going to be, for lack of a better term, a shit show when it comes to reading and my job because we have a conference and it's when school starts back up and everyone suddenly comes off vacation and realizes they haven't checked their emails in three months. Yeah, it's that kind of a month. So I don't honestly think I'm going to get all of these done, but I need to make an effort. Uh, quite a few of these are ones that I've heard that there's rep in them and I'm doing conference sessions on books with certain reps. So um, I, I need to get them done and I'm going to try and do them frantically as fast as possible. Uh, so if I'm able to squeeze them in, 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 in any time, um, even if it's the very end of of August, um, then I'm going to do that. So, uh, yeah. And I got a buttload of arcs like a week and a half ago, of course. And then I, for some reason, went to the library to pick up three holds and somehow left with like 15 books. Thank God most of them are graphic novels and I can normally read a couple of those a day, but like, what is happening? I also noticed, I think I have quite a few like larger-ish books, so I'm also trying to find some smaller books to like jam into weird spots. So, We'll see how this month goes, but anyways, since y'all seem to really like these videos for some inexplicable reason, um, this is my TBR for September. So I've actually been sort of curious about this one since it came out, um, but it is one of those victims of, despite it being 2019, publishers not making an audiobook for this, at least not last when I looked. Um, so I am going to try Murder Trending by Gretchen McNeil. She's actually going to be in the TBR and Beyond group doing a live chat in the month of September, which is really cool. Uh, and we're also going to be doing a hashtag murder funding. Um, I'm on hold through my library for that book. I just don't know if it'll get to me in time. So it's kind of on my TBR if it shows up, right? Um, but it's supposed to be a bit of a horror kill post repeat. Um, 50 million people are about to watch me die as the judge reads my sentence. She heard the bailiff come up behind her. She'd expect to be escorted back to her cell, but instead felt a hand on her wrist, a pinch in her arm. It must have been a needle. She was rendered unconscious before they unhauled her to Alcatraz 2.0. Alcatraz 2.0, she's heard the judge say it, but she still could not believe it. The sentence was not was usually reserved for the most infamous of convicted killers, mobsters, mass murderers, terrorists, and assassins. They are notorious. They are dangerous. They get good ratings. D was a 17-year-old nobody who couldn't even throw a punch, let alone live long enough on Alcatraz 2.0 to gain a cult following. Yet here she is about the star attraction on the number one live stream in the country. It sounds like The Purge in novel format for millennials, though. We also voted in the TBR Beyond group for another book this month, and everyone voted in We Hunt the Flame by Hafsai Say Hafsai Faisal. I'm so sorry, I'm trying really hard. Um, this was in the Owl Crate, so that doesn't surprise me. A lot of people have it and just want to get to it. Actually, I think it was in a couple book boxes, which is cool. Um, I know it's supposed to be Middle Eastern folklore and own voices from the author. I believe it's supposed to be Muslim uh, main character as well, which is always awesome, um, because uh, people lived because she killed, people died because she lived. And I was like, that sounds kind of cool. Oh, cool, the sun's coming up all of a sudden. Thanks! It'll disappear in five minutes, don't worry. I'm curious about this one, because I haven't really heard many people say much about it. Um, we were all pretty hyped when it came out, and then I just I think everyone got it and was like, okay, I'll get to it. And no one's gotten to it yet. The the life of a bookworm. And if you want to join in the group, um, read a lot. Okay, I've pushed this off several TBRs, either like after I literally filmed my video and was like, I'm going to read it, or I literally was like, okay, you're going to read it this month. It gets put on there and like slowly my TBR builds up and I'm like, I don't really, I just sounded like a goat. Oh my God. Sorry. Uh, I'm just like, mm, I don't think I actually have the time for this. And Outlander books are not books you can binge. Like they're 800 pages of dense historical fiction and I like it. Okay. Um, so when my own heart's blood and I'm actually like a 99% sure I didn't actually read this book. It came out and I booked it to the bookstore. I remember running it, living still in my hometown in Ontario in Orangeville and 
booking it across town to the only bookstore we had in town. It was like an hour walk and getting it on opening day because it's always a little bit cheaper when it first comes out at, at Indigo. And I've moved with it like five times and haven't gotten rid of it. So I, I need to actually breathe this, <laughs> um, get to it ASAP. I'm going to be ready for The King of Crows to come out. This month I'm going to read Before the Devil Breaks You by Lilla Bray. I'm kind of nervous because everyone was like, oh, it's going to hurt, girl. Like, if you thought book one and two were good, wait for book. Just wait and be ready for it to hurt. I'm like, awesome. Thank God I waited all this time to, like, start reading this series. So props to the publishers for having awful continuous cover changes. Uh, the cover is um, weirding me out a little bit. It's because I watch those weird things on YouTube of, like, the 10 most insane haunted asylums. I watch those for some reason, even though I know I'm going to be terrified of them. I watch those continuously. And I watched those yesterday, and I'm pretty sure they had, like, a pretty similar picture on it. So I'm like, cool, I'm going to die. I actually just got the arc for this author's new book, so it kind of, like, reminded me of, oh, this has been on your TBR a few times, again, and you keep kind of bumping off. So, Echo North by Joanne Ruth Meyer. I don't honestly remember anything of this book. I remember reading the blurb when I bought it. She dreamed of the wood and the wolf who was trapped there. And you can see, like, the wolf up there. I love the cover. I love the cover of the new one. It sounded up my alley, I remember. Something, like, sort of a fairy tale-ish retelling, but also, like, Scandinavian or Russian or something like that. Um, but, yeah, I'm very excited to finally read this. I am also so freaking excited. I'm going to be reading All the Bad Apples by Moira Fowley Doyle. She is one of my instant buy authors. She's an author from Ireland. She writes wonderful, weird, and queer books. And she is on Voices as well. She identifies as lesbian. And so it's always set in Ireland for the most part as well, too. I think all th this is set in Ireland and the other two books I read by her are set in Ireland as well. Um, Our Family Tree is Full of Bad Apples. You know, the kind, the ones who don't follow the rules, the ones who dress differently, think differently, love differently. The curse of the bad apples has claimed my sister, and now it's coming from me. A powerful, haunting, unforgettable story about women finding their voices from the critically acclaimed author. I am, like, in love with the UK cover. The US cover looks like I've seen white girls on covers before, like, with shocked faces. I'm curious, though, if I read this, if it correlates to it, because, like, my friends were like, oh, it's so bright and colorful. I'm like, okay, but if you look at it, like, there's skulls, and <laughs> someone, like, pierced through, like, vines at the bottom, and, um, po I think it says po- I don't know if it says poison or potent, but, like, it just- looks kind of sketchy when you actually start looking at the details so i'm so freaking excited to read this i'm so happy i got the uk cover it's so freaking pretty also the uk cover back being 7.99 angers me so much as a canadian <laughs> we get so screwed over with book prices this was actually like uh, i didn't know about it until like the day it came out and i've been kind of curious about it since again despite it being 2019 publisher only releases a physical format not an audio format um so the last word by samantha hastings i got interested because yes she has my same first name okay yes i am that simple of a human being but like my name's not ash my name's not like spelt like really weird or like it's not like super like at a left field i got named after the witch from the witch basically but i mean like despite how High school. I went to high school. My graduating class was only like 90 kids, which is really small for my geographic area. My high school had like 3,000 kids in it. And somehow there were like six Samantha M's, all of us graduating in the same year, and we all took, like, the same class. But anyways, it's supposed to be, it's a quite small one, though, um, a Victorian mystery with a female teenage character. And that sounds like a recipe for Sam. So I'm excited to pick this up pretty quick. I think I can read this in a day easily. Like it's less than like, I think it's only just over 200, 250 pages. So hopefully I love it. I'm also going to try and read Chimes of a Lost Cathedral by Janet Fitch. I dead ass forgot about that book. So I read The Revolution of Marina M. It was like the first book I think I read in 2018. And I really enjoyed it. I had never read this author before. Um, and I was just wandering around the library and I noticed this was on. And I went, that kind of looks familiar. And joke and I'm like the the it, the sequel came out and no one said anything to me I didn't see anything for it um so I picked it up and I'm curious because it looks a little bit smaller than the first one was but uh I feel like this is another like you can't binge this book it takes a little bit of a time I think kind of like Outlander um and I'm curious to see what it's going to go into based on the time period it left off in um with all of all of the sort of like revolutionary freedomy stuff kind of coming down and what's going to be a lot of hunger in in russia just 
based on time period and what I know. So I'm really, really curious to see where this one goes. Someone DM'd me on Instagram and was like, hey, I like these books. Maybe you'll like them. And I was like, cool. I looked one up and my library had it. So I picked up The Box and the Dragonfly, uh, book one of the Keeper series by Ted Sanders. It's a middle grade. I know nothing of it. Um, I kind of skim looked it all up when she mentioned it to me. And then I, sorry, I'm assuming it was a she, I can't remember. And then I looked in my library, had it, and it didn't have the other one. So I was like, cool, I guess, well, that kind of answers my question. So it's a new middle grade series. I think it came out a couple years ago for sure. Oh my God, there's still stamps. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm, oh, why did I think it was from my library? It's definitely not. Either way, um, I'm curious about it. Uh, it, it look, the cover and like just kind of looks like something a middle grade I'd be into and I just find it really interesting that I read middle grades now it's predominantly all boy main characters and then as soon as we get to YA we're like no boy main characters it's all women <laughs> so uh, I kind of like switching into middle grade for that reason a lot of the time so in the TBR and Beyond group we do like a recently blogged about post like once a week or so where you share a link to your most recent post that you want to like throw out there for people to read and I was just skimming through it and I saw this cover in the thumbnail and went that looks like a book I would want to read because yes, I judge a book by its cover. Okay. Um, we all do it. So I looked this up and I was like, this looks like a me book. And once again, or oh, maybe this is why my library had it in. I was confusing it with that one and that one. Um, Cogheart by Peter Bunzel. Actually, theirs was for the sequel to this. So I was like, oh, book two. I've never even heard of book one. We had book one. Um, I love this cover so, so, so much. It reminds me a little bit of Tilly and the Book Wanderers. A little bit, just a tiny little bit. I don't know why, because it doesn't really have a ton in common. Maybe it's the color scheme or like the shapes or something like that. Some secrets change the world in a heartbeat. Lily's life is in moral peril. Her father is missing and now silver-eyed men stalk her through the shadows. Am I sure this was a middle grade? <laughs> What could they want from her? With her friend, Robert, the clockmaker's son, and Malkin, her, her mechanical fox. <gasps> yes, there's an animal sidekick. Uh, Lily is plunged into a murky, menacing world. Too soon, Lily realizes that these holds, that they hold dear, um, that these holds dear may be the very ones to break her heart. Murder, mayhem, and mystery meets the gripping steampunk adventure. It sounds so cute. It sounds like a darker middle grade. It makes me think of Neil Gaiman a little bit, actually. Um, so I wonder if it'll be like Coraline. Because that was a messed up book. And I read that a lot as a child. Maybe that would explain a lot about how I grew up. Anyways, um, I'm going to read this. I have almost bought, borrowed, and like picked this book up in like so many different places. And at the last minute, I don't. So I finally picked it up at the library. The Motion of Puppets by Keith Donahue. Um, the cover just looks so interesting. So, so interesting. Um, and I had a bunch of people like in for a while, I think probably closer to when it came out, constantly recommend it in threads when I was like scrolling through. Um, the Stolen Child comes a modern take on, oops, from the best-selling author of The Boy Who Drew Monsters and The Stolen Child comes a modern take on the Orpheus and Eurydice, Eurydice myth, a suspenseful tale of romance and enchantment in this, in the old city of Quebec. Um, I could probably name on half of a hand how many books I've read set in Quebec, uh, let alone Quebec City specifically. Um, so I... I, I'm just really interested. I find, though, a lot of the times when books are set in Canada, I'm always like, I want more books set in Canada. I read them, I'm like, Canada setting sucks. Like, I'm sorry, but we have, like, kind of, like, really basic boring cities. And, like, we don't really have history the way that a lot of European countries do. Um, we're only, like, 151 now years old um, as, like, a country itself. So we don't really have any of those, like, grand castles or anything like that. It's just a lot of, like, genocide and trails like train tracks and that sort of stuff in Canada so but anyways um I'm really curious about this and it is quite small too so I think this is another one that I could read easily in a day and maybe if I like it I can look into his other works I'm also going to get to the downstairs girl by Stacey Lee I feel really bad this was on my shelf and I kind of just kept forgetting about it even though I really 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 want to read it um blurb by Stephanie Garber is always a good sign for me I freaking love Carval uh some secrets just won't stay buried I'm noticing I'm reading a lot of mysteries <laughs> I just realized that uh, by day, 17-year-old Joanne Kwan works as a lady's maid for the cruel daughter of one of the wealthiest men in Atlanta. But by night, Joe moonlights as a pseudonym author for a newspaper advice column for the for the genteel southern lady, Dear Miss Sweetie. And that is all I've... I literally haven't read the second paragraph. I heard that. I was like, okay, I want it. So I have an arc of it. I'm finally going to read it. It came out uh, August... I want to say 13th, but I don't... 
no, if my brain's just inventing that number. It came out in August sometime, or early August, I think. And I'm just really, really excited to read this. Really, really excited. I don't quite know why, because I've only read like two sentences. I also have an arc of Spin the Dawn to Get To by Elizabeth Lim. This is, I think, blurb is like Project Runway Meets. Um, oh, what was the other one? Project Runway Meets Something Fantasy Related. Um, a gifted tailor in disguise, three legendary dresses, the competition of a lifetime. Maybe that'll help you. It was Project Runway Meets Something. I remember that vividly when, like, news of it getting, uh, published came out. I am insanely excited to picking up, to be picking up these Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. This has potential to be fantastic or a total disappointment for me. Like, it sounds perfect. And its own voice is queer rap as well, which, love. Um, it's a contemporary though, and I feel like I've been burned a couple times on like contemporaries or just books that have like a lot of queer rap. I'm like, awesome, yes, queer rap! And then you read it and you're like, ah, oh, but it's, the rap is good, but the story isn't. <laughs> so I got it from the library. Hopefully I'll love it. If I do, this is one I think I will pick up my own copy of because I really, really do like this cover. Oh, I actually love this like dedication to, from my wife Megan, meeting you changed everything, including this story. Oh. Then I can pretend it's like a happily ever after at the end, maybe. I like that. That makes me happy. Yeah, all I've really heard is there was a bunch of witches. There's some, like, crush triangle stuff with a new crush and an ex-girlfriend and the main character. And they're supposed to be, like, blood rituals or something like that. I'm here for it. Okay, I have been debating picking this up in a bookstore at least, I remember vividly, probably at least five times, okay? It's expensive in Canada, okay? And I've never actually read this author before. I don't know if they're a debut author. But I'm like, mm, it's about feminism and... I mean, it's literally blurbed as me too, hashtag me too and hashtag resistance in an epic fantasy lens. And I feel like a lot of authors have tried to take social stuff in contemporary times and then put it in, like, fantasy elements. And it doesn't always translate the greatest or it comes off a little bit problematic-y. So I've decided I'm going to get it through the library. And when I went to the library, it just happened to be on the bookshelf, which I'm very happy about. So The Women's War by Jenna Glass. It is a beast size as well. Also, it's her first book in fantasy as well. So I feel like sometimes when authors... Why do I keep finding these everywhere? It's because I don't take them out when I get home from the library. Authors switching genres can sometimes... Like, someone like Adam Silvera. He writes a lot of contemporary. Um, and he has his first fantasy book coming out um, in early 2020. And that is one that I'm really curious to see how it goes, because he is a very contemporary writer. Um, there are some authors that seem to very, like, seamlessly switch back and forth between all of these different genres. Um, but then I feel like those are a lot far fewer than authors who find a genre or two and they just stick to them. Uh, in a feminist fantasy epic, a revolutionary spell gives women the ability to control their own fertility with the consequences that rock their patriarchal society to its core. So I am nervous, but hopeful going in reading this. Oh look, the sun's disappeared. Ha, huh, told you. I'm also very curious to pick up Girl with Sharp Sticks by Susan Young. This is the first book in a new series. I know she wrote the series, uh, what was it, the, the program. I owned four books of that series and then my dogs peed on it and I got rid of it. And I've just literally never like thought to go get them. I think it was a time, uh, uh, like the topic was very dystopian sci-fi and I think it's just not something that I'm really into reading a lot in the last like two years or so. So this one just sounds quite interesting and I had a couple friends read the arcs and say it actually was quite good. Uh, some of the prettiest flowers have the sharpest thorns. Uh, the girls of the Innovations Academy of Beautiful and Well-Behaved, it says so in the report cards under the watchful gaze of the Guardian, they received well-rounded education that promises to make them better. Obedient girls, free from uh, arrogance and defiance. Sure. Free from the troublesome opinions of individual interest. But the girls' carefully controlled existence may not be quite what it appears. That sounds a little bit like the similars to me. And I'm very excited for that. I'm getting back on my things I want to do by the end of the year because I've realized it's like the last quarter of the year. Um, I'm going to pick up The Invasion of the Tearling. This is the sequel to The Queen of the Tearling. People seem to either love or detest how this series ended. Kind of like Divergent. I feel like more people hated how Divergent ended though. Um, but this one seems to be kind of almost 50-50 from what I've seen anyway. So I'm curious to finish. This will be a reread for me, but I never actually read the third and final book. So... Once I read this, I'm going to read the final one in October, 
and I'll be able to judge, I guess. I'm also going to pick up The Dire King by William Ritter. This is the fourth book in the Jacoby series that I'm rereading, and I, I'm all caught up in William Ritter stuff. I read his new middle grade, and I've reread this series, so I, like, I read five William Ritter books this year. Um, I hope he keeps coming out with stuff. I really, really enjoyed it. I also saw, like, I mean, if you watched my Tuesday video last Tuesday, you saw someone compare Jacoby to a madness so discreet. Then I had someone say that, like, they didn't read Jacoby because someone told them that there was rape in it. Um, it, I don't, I don't have any recollection of that happening whatsoever. So if someone's spreading that word around, um, I don't remember any of that happening in Jacoby. So you're all clear to walk, read Jacoby if you're trying to avoid that trigger warning. It doesn't exist in any of the four books that I can remember, and I literally reread them this year. <laughs> I'm also hoping to pick up A Treason of Thorns by Laura Weymouth, like, as soon as my copy comes in. I am so damn excited about that book. Laura Weymouth did things to my soul with the light between both worlds. I'm still not totally sure if that entire book was in her head as a coping mechanism or if it actually happened. And it's going to bug me till the day I die. And she was like, you could say it as both. No, woman, just give me a straight answer. I don't do well. Can you tell I'm that person when the professor in university was like, write a paper on the topic. You pick the topic and length. And you're like, okay, but how long does it have to be? And they're like, any length. I'm like, no, bitch, you give me a length. You give me a range at least. I'm going to turn you in a one-page paper then, and you can't say nothing, okay? You need to give me some parameters and restrictions, okay? I'm that person. Um, so that bugs me. But A Treason of Thorns is like kind of uh, more into fantasy. Her last one was historical fiction fantasy. This one is more fantasy with a bit of historical fiction. So I'm so insanely curious about this. I loved The Light Between Both Worlds so much. So I have very high hopes for this one. I'm also hoping to read The Sisters of the Winterwood um, by uh, Rebecca... Ah, I can't remember the name. Um, my copy is on its way from the library, hopefully soon. It's been, it was shipped like two days or two weeks ago. Um, but... I've heard very mixed things about this one, so I decided to go for a library copy, um, and hopefully I enjoy it. I know it's supposed to be a fantasy with, like, woods and animals, which sounds like something I'll enjoy, um, and hopefully, hopefully I love it. And lastly, um, I'm hoping to get to Book of Fire by Michelle Kenny. Um, uh, it's the first book uh, in this series. It's the sequel. She was so, so sweet to send me um, the physical copies uh, last December-ish, I think, um, and I finally got them when I went back to work, I think, in January, and Canada Post had slit the package open, and book one got lost, so I have a physical copy of book two, and I'll have to get an ebook. I have an ebook copy of book one um, that I have to print out, and I printed it out to read it, like, months ago, and then I literally sat down, and my dogs did something, and I dropped all of the unconnected pages. There were no page numbers, <laughs> so I frantic, just gave up, um, so I've Got a new set, a new copy, um, printed off copy that I'm going to give a go. I want to make sure I get to this one in September or October. I'm giving myself between the two months because September is chaotic. But if she's watching this, I am so sorry. It is still very top fresh in my mind, um, and I'm going to get to it before the end of October. I swear to God. So those are all the books that I plan on trying to read in the month of September. We'll see how it goes. Uh, let me know in the description, not the description, let me know in the comment section down below what you plan on reading in the month of September or if you've read any of these and I'm way out in left field from what I think of the book is about or what you generally thought of the book. I would also love to know. And I will link all of these books, oh, that's going to be fun, in the description down below with all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back and have a safe at least in Canada, September's back to school month. So have a safe back to school month. Bye, people.